All right, let's go to page one. All right, so we got an independent list of independent tasks and their times are shown here, All right? They want us to, to construct a decreasing time priority list. You guys all remember how to do that, right? We're gonna explain it to me. What do you, how do you do this? Yeah, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna pick the, the largest answer, the biggest answer, and I'm gonna pick the next biggest, the next biggest, the next biggest, all the way until they're all up here to the smallest. So I'm at my biggest completion time in front, the smallest completion time in back. So let's do that. Eight, followed by five, followed by three. You guys okay with that? No, four. Yeah, four comes in next. Followed by three, followed by two, followed by one. Okay, so I have two, four, six up here. And I got two, four, six in my decreasing time priority list. So it looks like I caught them all. So now they want us to use this list to schedule the task and to determine completion time on two machines. So we're going to schedule this using this order. Okay. So I I listed this by time. By time. I mean, I could have done it by task too. I could have said T1, T4, T2, T6, T5, T3. They're, they're, they're both correct, all right? Now, when you schedule them, you sometimes will have the labels. It's, it's more proper to put the task labels on them, but you don't always get the task labels. Sometimes you can just put the completion times in the schedule. Sometimes you can even make up your own labels to those task names. You can put task name to those, those, those completion times if you want. So I'm gonna go, task one is the first one, and that's eight. Take it off my list. Task four is the next one, and I'm gonna put it on first available because these are independent projects. Independent tasks, I should say. And all the tasks collectively are the project. <clears throat> How do I know these are independent? By looking at the diagram. They're not connected. There's no arrows. There's no arrows. See, there's none of that. These are independent tasks. So task four is, is completion time is five. Task two, I'm going to put it on first available, which is on machine two. And I'm going to put that in at, at four. And then task six, where do I put task six? Do I put task six at, at hour eight or hour nine? Eight. Yeah, I'm going to put it first available. So task six goes there. And then task five is going to go right there. And now, what do I do with task three? Well, you technically you can put it in um, on either machine, but you typically want to put your priority task on machine one. That's just best practice. If you put it on machine two, I'm not going to nick you, but the best practice is you put your operation on machine one. Well, why machine one? Because typically that's your best equipment. That's your most talented workers, okay? You put your best workers right on the first machine. It's usually the one that comes first in the shop. Those people are all incentivized to, to get and work on that line. They know it. They know they're the best at their job and they're rewarded with that position to be on machine one. It's a thing. It's how you create a competitive work environment. It's how you get People to incentivize, be incentivized to to get to, to get the big bucks, to make the big bucks. All right. So what's our completion time? It's Twelve. So is this optimal? What well, we got to do that? What we got to do? We got we got to figure that out. We got to figure out the total number in our in our in our in our priority list. And we divide by our capacity. Add this up, eight plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one. 
the 23. And then our capacity is two. And when I divide this out, I get 11.5. And what do I do with that number? How am I rounding that? So I'm always, not to the nearest over number, I'm always rounding up. Rounded up to the whole number, the next whole number. If, it's, if this is 2.4 and you say round or 11.4 and you say round to the nearest whole number, you're gonna round it down. You always are rounding and bumping this up. You now, why is that? Why is that? Let's say I got a hockey stick. All right. I got a hockey stick and it's its length is six foot. And I'm going to try to fit it in a five foot box because that's my capacity. That's my big capacity. Well, it doesn't fit, right? Am I going to cut a foot off the hockey stick so it fits? No. You got to, you got to round it. You got, you, 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 you got to round it into something bigger. Okay. If this is, if this is 5.1 feet long, it's got to fit in a six foot box. Right? You can't fit it in a five foot box. Well, this happens all the time, right? You've got to put it in a bigger container. I, I travel for hockey tournaments every year. We've had a hockey tournament in Austin and Dallas. We've, dri we've driven up there. I've got a hockey tournament, tournament in Las Vegas first week of December that we're going to fly to and, and we're going to have to take our, all our hockey equipment to play. And so not that this is going to be compartmentalized, but if it was containerized in a certain shipping container and on the air and put on the airplane, which would be the best scenario, so it doesn't get broken, um, that would be our application. A hockey stick. Um, this hockey stick is about two hundred dollars. Okay. Um, a good, a really, really good hockey stick that NHL players will play with. They're about five, six hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars. Oh, the same thing. They have different performances. Um, my favorite hockey stick was an Easton hockey stick. Easton doesn't play, they, they make baseball bats. They don't make hockey sticks anymore. I can't buy an Easton hockey stick. Um, I keep trying a new hockey stick. I haven't found one I really like. So I should say that, that I haven't found one I really love. So if you go to Mr. Bloom's house, I got 20 hockey sticks sitting, sitting in my front door. Some of them for $60, some more $100, some more for $200. But uh, I have yet, everyone matches the player differently. Okay, I play the game a certain way. And uh, I've had several break on me. I've probably had 10 hockey sticks break. That's what's, that's what's sitting around here, some broken ones. But uh, know that that's why we round up. Because you're not gonna cut 10 inches of a hockey stick so it fits in a box, okay? You're gonna buy in a new hockey stick. And someone may, may be very upset because that was their favorite hockey stick. Got it? So is this optimal? Well, this number runs up to 12. Our completion time is 12. Well, yes, what back supports you is, 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 our, is our answer. Our answer is 12. So it matches that. It supports that. Make sense? Number two. Again, we're going to construct a critical path priority list. First thing you want to do, this one's a slick one. This one's pretty easy. You might have one like this on the test. So list these out. Test one, test two, test three is my first route. Seven plus nine plus five. 21, then see it branches at task two. So I got task one to task two and it branches to task six. So seven plus nine plus seven is 23. And then the next one is gonna be task four. Task four to task five up to task three. Is anybody struggling with this? 14, 19? You guys all know how to do this, right? I mean, that last one, I mean, let me highlight this again. So first one is test one, test two, test three. 
Second one is task one, task two, down to task six. Third one is task four, task five, up to task three. And the last one is going to be task four, task five, to task six. Okay, so there's four. There's four of these. And I got to write down the last one task four, task five, to task six. And that's 14, that's 21 also. And so then I ask the question what's the question I ask? Yeah, what is my critical path? Okay, which one is it? Right. 23 is my critical path. So I look at the first task in that list, and that's task one. Well, that's the first one I write down. I look at that completion time, and it's seven. And so I take seven off that total, and I get 16. And then I look in my list there and I see if there's another task one. Well, there is. First one's got task one in it. So I, I have to subtract that completion time off that total. So I get 14. So now I've subtracted that off. I cross it out. And I ask that my question again, what is my new critical path? And it's what? This is last one, 21. Well, I look at what's first in that list, and it's task four. And task four completion time is eight. So I'm going to subtract eight off that total. When I subtract eight from that, I get 13. And then I look at the rest of the list, and I see if there's another task four in another list, and there is. So I subtract eight off that total of 19, and I get 11. So now I can cross those off my list. And you're constantly writing down the next task list after you see what your critical path is. And now I ask the question again, what is my new critical path? From this one, it's 16. And I look at what's first in that list and it's task two. I'm gonna write that down. And then I look at this completion time and task two has a completion time of nine. I'm going to subtract it off that and I get seven. And now I'm looking in my list to see if there's another task two anywhere. And there is in the first one. I'm going to subtract seven off of that, 14, and I get seven. So now I've subtracted all those completion times off the totals. And I'm going to ask the question again what is my new critical path? Wait, how'd you get? Nine was my completion time. Oh, I'm sorry. That is my completion. I did it right there. I did it wrong there. Thank you. So I should have subtracted nine from both of them. And for some reason, there's a lot of information in here. And it's easy to make mistakes. If Mr. Bloom can make mistakes. You are going to make mistakes too. So thank you. I'll, I'll see. I'll give you a pointer at the end here that you can get, you can see when you made mistakes. Now I'm asking the question: What is my new critical path? And it's 13. All right. And I look at that first task in the list, and it's task five. It's task five. And we look at that completion time in task five, and that's six. So I'm going to subtract that off the list, that total list, and. Uh, and then I'm looking at where else is test five. Well, it's in that third one. And I subtract completion time of six off of that. Now I can cross this out. Now, this is where you can catch if you made a mistake or not. This last step. You should have some agreement about these completion times. We'll look at task three is five. Well, look at task three. Is it five? Well, yeah, that, that's five. Task six, well, that, that, that completion time should be seven. And there are seven. If they're not, if they don't work out to be to match those completion times, we did something wrong. And then you got to look through your list to see what it was. It was maybe you subtracted seven instead of nine, like Mr. Bloom. It's, it's, it's just one error. And you can look at that last step because it should all be in agreement. 
what those completion times are. And so now I know my biggest critical path is, going to be, is T6, and that's what goes next. And then T3 is the last one. Guys, that is my critical path priority list. And now we're going to schedule it. So we did this. We constructed a critical path priority list. It's right here. And now we're going to use this list to schedule the task and determine our completion time on our schedule using two machines. That's the next step. This is a two-part question. Now, this is easy. Once you get the critical path priority list, this doesn't take any time. Let's do this. So task one, completion time is seven. Take out the list. Task four, you're gonna put it up where you got capacity. These are both independent tasks. Both of these are independent tasks. You can, you can start them right away. So that completion time is eight. Now I go to the next one, task two. Well, task two follows task one. So when task one is done, I can schedule task two, and that's nine. Which right there. Looks like I'm gonna run out of a little room here. So two, four, six, eight, nine. And that's off my list, okay? So I also scribble this out when I've scheduled this. It kind of helps me see what's ready, what's dependent. And now the next one on my list is task five. Well, I can run task five right after task four is run. So task five goes right there, it's six. There's two, four, five, there's six. All right, so task six is next. And task six, you guys see that we gotta wait. Task six is, is dependent on task two running. And task two is not complete until six, hour 16. We got idle time, guys. We got idle time. But then at hour 16, we can schedule task six. And that's going to be seven, and I'm going to run short here. It's going to run out four more. Some of you guys have. The extended schedule? Some of you don't. So now I take task six off the list. And then my last one is task three. And task three, I can queue up right at hour 16. And task three is five hours. So there's 19, 20, this is 21, 22, 20, this is 20, hour 23. So we got two more hours of idle time. Two more hours of vital time. So my completion time is what? Yeah, it's 23. It's when everything's scheduled and complete. It happens at hour 23 or minute 23. We, we don't know <clears throat> our units here. So how do we know whether the schedule is optimal? How do we know in this particular case? Yeah, you got to figure it out if, the, if your completion time equals critical path. That's the difference between the other ones that we were doing were, were independent tasks. We're independent tasks. This was an independent task we did. That's why we did this total over, capa over capacity equation. But when we're doing dependent tasks, we got to look at our critical path. So which is my biggest answer here? Yeah, it's 23. My critical path is 23. So how do I know? Well, my critical path is 23. That's how you know it's optimal. So when you have a dependent schedule, you got to figure out critical path. And then you got to compare your, your completion time to critical path. Okay? That's how you determine it's optimal. That's the difference. Question on this. All right. I think that's what I'm going to do for you. Unless you guys got a question. Is there another one you want me to do? I need two pages. I'll post uh, I'll post a video and the answers on the canvas. Uh, so we get two pages. There's four more pages to do. 
this stuff is really time consuming when I have to explain it. Are you guys doing it? It's probably really fast. Probably really fast. Just, let me do one more. Can I do one more? There's one more question I want to do. I think it's question five. I think it's question five. No, you guys all know how to do this, right? These are independent tasks. You guys, the total here is 73 minutes. It's already totaled for you. What's my capacity here? Is my capacity eight or is my capacity two? It's two, two processors. We're not, eight tasks is not my capacity. That's called a distractor. Don't get tricked by that. Um, this is the one I want to do. Right here. We had one like this on yesterday's, on Monday's homework. So if we have a order requirement diagram that's already scheduled and the schedule requires 33 minutes using four processors. What happens if one of the processors go down? Okay, one of the processors go down and we only got three to operate with. Is it going to be more? Is it going to take more time than 33 or is it going to take exactly the same time? Or is it going to take less time? If I'm processing on less processors, what's going to happen to my completion time? It's going to go up, go down, still the same. It's going to go up, it's going to get bigger. How do I figure out how much bigger? We got to figure out your total number of processing minutes. You do that by 33 times four. That's your total processing minutes. Okay. And if you got three processors, how are you going to split up that work? You're going to try to schedule it evenly, but you don't really know how it's going to schedule. You only got three processors. And so you're going to divide that out. You get 44. Well, you get 44 minutes. Well, is it exactly 44 minutes or is it at least 44 minutes? Sorry, it's at least. It could be 44 minutes or it could be more. When you guys want to under promise or deliver. All right. Okay, that's the one that I wanted to show you. And I need to do the Yes, sir. Okay. That's good job. Yes, sir. Up to the dock, in the English hall, the art room, or in the library. 